Hey everyone, and welcome back to my new old house. So today we're going to talk about something that is the bane of many a homeowner's existence, and that is wallpaper. So sometimes when you're looking for a new house, you get really excited, you see a good one, you go inside, so far so good, and then you turn a corner and there it is, wallpaper everywhere. Some people maybe don't mind it, maybe it's not that bad, maybe it's a more neutral pattern and it's, it's something you can live with for a few years. Some people see it as an exciting challenge, having to take it off and redo it and all that. But I always have to wonder myself, why? Why do we do this? Why do we cover the walls of our homes in this paper that is so tedious and a sticky mess to get rid of? So wallpaper trends obviously change and wallpaper styles come and go. But believe it or not, wallpaper has been around in some form or another for hundreds of years. But as with most trends, this one started small. An interesting thing about wallpaper is that it first fell into fashion as a way of imitating the high quality paintings and tapestries that only the wealthiest in Europe were able to use to adorn their walls. In fact, the designs of these early wallpapers were often floral motifs and other designs copied from such textiles. During the 16th century, wooden blocks were used to imprint designs on small square pieces of paper, which would either be left black and white or could be colored by hand. These small pieces would line cabinets or shelves, perhaps even small rooms. Block printing on a larger scale, sometimes using colored paint, which therefore did not have to be filled in, became popular by the 18th century, and that popularity continued into the 20th century. These patterns required multiple blocks, one for each color, and days of drying time, not to mention immaculate precision. With the craftsmanship and time that went into making this kind of wallpaper, it was not exactly cheap, especially after high demand led to increase in taxes on the product but it did grow in popularity amongst the middle class at this time. Block print wallpaper designed by William Morris offered a revival of the style in the 19th century and helped to usher in the arts and crafts movement. By the late 17th and early 18th centuries, a new kind of wallpaper called flock wallpaper emerged as the most in-demand style. Again, this paper was designed to imitate velvet hangings and tapestries of the wealthy. The word flock refers to a powdered wool, which was a waste of the woolen cloth industry, that would then be glued in a design to cloth, and thus would have a velvet-like appearance. Flock paper was often used in public rooms of grand houses in the 18th and 19th centuries. It's extremely durable, and ironically, has proven to last longer than the velvet and damask tapestries it was made to imitate. Flock wallpapers of the early 18th century with their classic floral motifs have remained impressive and popular to this day. And what's gone into the criminal classes? Good job I'm not one of them. So you take it out on the wall? Ah, oh, the wall, I had it coming. Wallpaper from China first began to appear in luxury shops in Europe at the end of the 17th century. These papers were much different in that they were painted by hand and did not contain a repeating pattern. Instead, they depicted large, mural-like images, often scenes of daily life or beautiful landscapes. They arrived in England as part of the overall trade in Chinese goods, thanks to the East India Company. It represented a larger trend in Chinese styles and prints, and eventually that handmade wallpaper was imitated, making it affordable for those who weren't ridiculously rich. In the mid-19th century, the mass production of wallpaper began, making it affordable in almost any home that desired it. During the Victorian era, combinations of wallpapers were popular, including a main pattern on the wall, a dado on the lower portion of the wall, a frieze at the top, and sometimes even wallpaper on the ceiling. Bright colors were also common, turning parlors of American homes of this era a bit gaudy, at least by today's standards. By the 20th century, while certain guardians of good taste like Edith Wharton claimed that wallpaper was not fit for the fashionable home, it became incredibly affordable to the American public. Any homeowner could pick out a few rolls of wallpaper from the Sears and Roebuck catalog and go to town. 
Bright colors were popular into the 1920s. By the 1940s, with most chemicals going towards the war effort, wallpapers became muted and neutral. In the 1940s and 50s, you saw vignette wallpaper gain in popularity, something a few of you may just remember. Wallpaper will always be here, just in different styles, colors, and materials. No matter how those of us who inherit it may curse its existence, there is no denying that even today, when done right, it can make certain rooms look magical. So that's it for this month's trip to my new old house. For those of you dealing with wallpaper issues, I wish you luck. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.